And as Masquerade returns to the winner's circle, a lot of his fans are going over to collect 2140, 740, and 210. The 210 because of Amity Chef finishing third. Robust 10 over at 540 and 210. Amity Chef pays $2.10 to show. Let's go to the winner's circle at Allen. I'm joined here by one of the most promising young drivers in harness racing, Richie Silverman, the youngest driver ever to win the Breeders' Crown. Richie, how old are you? 22. I just turned 22 November 4th. And was this your greatest victory in harness racing? 100%. We're going to go to a replay here. Masquerade was involved in the early action as he tried to protect his rail position. But here he comes again, swooping for the lead. Richie, do you know the horse can move this fast? Yeah, Masquerade has been a great horse for us all year. He's had a little, he's free-legged, so uh, you, you can't uh, start him up real quick. So he's much better, I learned from the week before. You know, if he could just grind out his own mile a little bit, and uh, get away from himself and lose. It's all on his own there. You raced him very aggressively after leaving the gate fast. Here you made your move, yet the fractions were relatively soft. Did you expect that you would be able to get away with such slow fractions? Well, not at the beginning of the race, but as it turned out, I realized I had a pretty good hold of him when we went by the quarter, and I knew we weren't going that much, so I thought I might as well take a shot here and give it a whirl. Somehow you managed to get around the last turn without any real challenges coming. Armbro Emerson was breathing down your neck a little bit, and Amity Chef had been grinding a long way. Who are you looking for right now? I was looking for Armbro Emerson to be right there, and I was looking for O'Donnell and uh, Robust Secondly, and Amity Chef good. also, but I knew I got away a little cheap for the three quarters, and they'd have to come a good way to come to be me tonight. Richie Silverman, congratulations on winning the Breeders' Crown, his biggest win as a driver. Let's go back over to Dave Johnson. I'm here with Jerry Silverman, the proud trainer and the proud papa of the winning driver. Which are you more proud of? I'm more proud of that boy. <laughs> that boy. Well, tell us about Masquerade, though. Masquerade was a horse, a colt, that last year hated his uh, hobbles as a two-year-old. He had tremendous ability. He told us he didn't want him, so we tried all winter long to get him to go free-legged. And he and, certainly can. Right, Dave, right. And what, were you expecting uh, big things tonight? We sure were, Dave. We saw his last race, which was, which was in a lesser company. He just was idling, going through the lane and finishing. He's been a horse that got run into a little bit in the little brown jug. He had little ailments after that when he stepped in Bill O'Donnell's wheel in the uh, adios. So he's had his problems. But, man, he's been a great horse, a great competitor. Well, Jerry, congratulations. Jerry Silverman, the trainer of the horse, the father of the driver. They need you for the trophy presentation. And we need to take this break. So we'll take one more pause, and then we'll be back at Garden State for more Breeders' Crown Activity 1986 after this. Top to bottom, here's the official finish of the Colton Gelding Pace. Masquerade, robust Hanover, Amity Chef third, Towner's big guy. The long shot was fourth, followed by Key State, Hanover, Armbro, Emerson, Wilco's data, Southern Gentleman, and Cash Asset. We saw two-year-olds, we saw three-year-olds. It was an exciting evening of racing here. 